this excerpt, out of all the speeches that, that are so famous with Malcolm X, um, was a speech he gave in Detroit, Michigan in 1963, which was actually two years, only two years before he was assassinated, I believe, at the uh, Autobahn Ballroom in, in New York City. Uh, Malcolm X's speech entitled, Message to the Grassroots. We want to have just an off-the-cuff chat between you and me, us. We want to talk right down to earth in a language that everyone here can easily understand. We all agree tonight, all of the, the speakers have agreed, that America has a very serious problem. Not only does America have a very serious problem, but our people have a very serious problem. America's problem is us. We're her problem. The only reason she has a problem is she doesn't want us here. And every time you look at yourself, be you black, brown, red, or yellow, or a so-called Negro, you represent a person who possesses such a serious problem for America because you're not wanted. Once you face this as a fact, then you can start plotting a course that will make you appear intelligent instead of unintelligent. What you and I need to do is learn to forget our differences. When we come together, we don't come together as Baptists or Methodists. You don't catch hell because you're a Baptist, and you don't catch hell because you're a Methodist. You don't catch hell because you're a Methodist or a Baptist. You don't catch hell because you're a Democrat or a Republican. You don't catch hell because you're a Mason or an Elk. And you sure don't catch hell because you're an American. Because if you was an American, you wouldn't catch no hell. You catch hell because you're a black man. You catch hell, all of us catch hell, for the same reason. So we are all black people, so-called Negroes, second-class citizens, ex-slaves. You are nothing but an ex-slave. You don't like to be told that, but what else are you? You are ex-slaves. You didn't come here on the Mayflower. You came here on a slave ship in chains, like a horse, or a cow, or a chicken. And you were brought here by the people who came here on the Mayflower. You were brought here by so-called pilgrims, or founding fathers. They were the ones who brought you here. We have a common enemy. We have this in common. We have a common oppressor, a common exploiter, a common discriminator. But once we all realize that we have this common enemy, then we unite on the basis of what we have in common. And what we have foremost in common is that enemy, the white man. He is an enemy to all of us. I know some of you think that some of them aren't enemies. Time will tell. Look at the American Revolution in 1776. That revolution was for what? For land. Why did they want that land? Independence. How was it carried out? Bloodshed. Number one, it was based on land, the basis of independence. And the only way they could get it was bloodshed. The French Revolution. What was it based on? The land. Less against the landlord. What was it for? Land. How did they get it? Bloodshed. Was no love lost? Was no compromise? Was no negotiation? I'm telling you, you don't know what a revolution is. Because when you find out what it is, you'll get back in the alley. You'll get out of the way. The, Ru <laughs> the Russian Revolution. What was it based on? Land. The land, less against the landlord. How did they bring it about? Bloodshed. You haven't got a revolution that doesn't involve bloodshed. And you're afraid to bleed. I said, you're afraid to bleed. As long as the white man sent you to Korea, you bled. He sent you to Germany, you bled. He sent you to the Pacific to fight the Japanese, you bled. You bleed for white people. But when it comes to seeing your own churches being bombed, your little black girls being murdered, you haven't got no blood. You bleed when the white man says bleed. You bite when the white man says bite, and you bark when the white man says bark. I hate to say this about us, but it's true. How are you going to be nonviolent in Mississippi as violent as you were in Korea? How can you justify being nonviolent in Mississippi and Alabama when your churches are being bombed and your little girls are being murdered and at the same time you're going to violent with Hitler and Tojo and somebody else that you don't even know? If violence is wrong in America, violence is wrong abroad. If it's wrong to be violent defending black women and black children and black babies and black men, well then it's wrong for America to draft us and make us violent abroad in defense of her. 
If it is right for American dra to draft us and teach us how to be violent in defense of her, then it is right for you and me to do whatever it is necessary to defend our own people right here in this country.